Hey, there you are. All right, so today we're going to be doing a uh, Dwarven Shield Warrior, right? A short little guy with a big beard, a shield, and a hammer. Should be pretty fun. I love the way these guys look, and uh, yeah, they're just a lot of fun. So what do you say? We cut to the chase, and I'll show you how you can make this little guy, too, for your own bookshelf or wherever else you want to put him. All righty, so I've already got one of these guys carved, and this is what they look like finished up. I've got this guy with a wider nose and some bigger cheeks. Uh, nice little design here in the shield. And we're going to do another one that's very similar to this, but you can easily change yours to look exactly like this one or however you want them to look. Do you want a thinner nose? Do you want bigger cheeks? Do you want a different pattern on the shield, different pattern on the hammer? What do you want to change? How do you want to change it? You just go ahead and do that as needed. And we're going to go over all that in the video and how to finish them as well. So what I'm using here is a two inch by two inch block that is four inches tall. I use the same size block for the uh, fat bottom mushrooms. You saw those guys as well. Two inch by two inch, four inches tall. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump into drawing the pattern on here. I'm putting this about an inch and uh, three eighths down for the shield. And then I'm coming in about a quarter inch around the edges. And you don't have to come in that quarter inch. If you wanna make the, 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 the bigger shield, you can. The shield on the first guy that's already down there on the left, he's got the uh, full shield that goes all the way down. And uh, this one's gonna come in a little bit. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, see how I like that. I'm gonna pop this overlay up so you can see the guy on the left is the one that's already done. The guy on the right is the guy that we're doing right now. This, this shield's gonna be slightly smaller, but that's okay. Um, I'm speeding through this uh, drawing process. Here, you see how I draw it, and we'll give a moment once I get it drawn, and you can see how it looks once it's finished. That's always the best way, I think, for people to copy what they need to. Okay, so with the drawing I got there, I'm, I'm matching the hammer pretty much the same as the other one. The shield, you can see, is coming up a little bit from the bottom. On the first one, it goes all the way to the bottom. So, well, something to think about. This is what we're going for. Pause here if you need to, and... Uh, Draw what you want to. <clears throat> we're not using all of this. I mean, this is a, this is just a good rough guide for how we're doing it, right? So we're gonna make, we're gonna stay true to this mostly, but we can change how we need to. So doing this, I'm gonna speed the video up a little bit. Uh, we're gonna go two times speed because it's gonna be a long video, so you can pause as needed. First off, all I'm doing is removing these rough edges, these hard edges, because they're hard on the hand when you're holding a carving. Well, especially carving a two inch by two inch block, it's a bit bigger. <laughs> So it's larger in the hand and you're kind of gripping it more firmly. Um, so yeah, taking those hard edges off can make this a lot easier. If you're a new carver, remember you should be wearing a carving glove. I've been carving for a long time, so I'm just wearing this thumb guard and that is my prerogative. But if you cut yourself, it's not my fault, it's just you, right? So starting on the left here, doing a sweeping cut, coming into the shoulder and out along the top of the head. We're just carving away. The, the material there on the left side of the head, and then we'll start doing the right side of the head as well. Once you get it sweeped in, you can kind of go in with a, a V cut here and cut out that chip into the shoulder to form the left side of the head like so. So I'm just coming in, coming down, then coming in from the side, just like that. Over and over until I bring that in about where I want it. Now we want to leave a little bit extra there, right? We don't want to bring it in too close, but to where our lines are allows us to have extra wood there so we can remove stuff afterwards and get closer and closer into what we want so we can put more detail in and adjust as necessary because you can always remove stuff but you can't add anymore when you're carving with wood so work on the inside of the head same thing here just <clears throat> try to keep it even and then work on doing the shoulder the same way you did the other one try to keep it symmetrical take a look go back and forth as needed from looking at the front view to carving and you can knock these shoulders out pretty quickly. So I'm gonna take a little more off this other side here to make it even, swapping around. And there we go. Now the back side is the next thing that goes, nice uh, good, what, half inch maybe off the back there, just to make this much more manageable for holding and to start taking off the majority of the wood here. When you're carving down like this for my piece, it's carving against the grain. So a lot of these pieces are chipping off a lot easier than they might otherwise ca or carve off because it's going against the grain. And going this direction here, going up with the grain, easier to cut, smoother cuts. Also do me a favor, like the video. The more folks that like these videos, the easier it is for these videos to have a bigger reach and the more likely I am to keep doing more. Now, as we move to the front of the carving here, the, uh, the takeaway should be we're going to be blocking everything in, right? So along the top of the shield here and along the hammer are our first sections. But starting on the top of the shield, we're going to do this rocking cut, pushing that blade in and then carving down to it. 
just to de define the outer edges of this shield, right? And we need to take a meat away from where the face is, because the face is going to be set back in a little bit. It's not going to be exactly in line with where the shield is. But take a look at the overlay on the left here, and you can see how we need to get a little of that meat out to get back to where the face is going to be. So we're just going to keep doing that and adjusting as needed, making a nice flat plane there about for how, about how far out the front of the nose is, right? That's all we're doing here, just blocking things in. Now with that blocked out a little bit, the next section to do is, is the shield itself, right? The shield is going to have a thickness to it, like this one here, right? So you can see that's like a quarter of an inch thick. So we need to draw a line here to show where that's going to go. And then we can start trying to carve that out right from the beginning. And it's going to be kind of behind the hammer here. And it's going to go in a little bit past the hammer, like so along those lines that we got in the front there. Now I'm going to keep this overly up for a while because I want you to keep in mind how thick that shield is, right? That, that shield is going thick, nice along the top here, which is where I'm carving now, and along the back and the bottom. You can see it clearly defined from all these angles, right? Having that be a clean, flat plane really sets this carving apart, I think. So keep that in mind as we work along the top edge of this thing here, okay? Um, we're going to keep doing this here, just nice, nice, simple cuts, right? Stop cuts where you come in to make a stop cut and then come down to that stop cut and then remove sections along the top of this helm here, making it even because we're bringing that head in a little bit still, right? Just like that, that overlay on the left, just bringing it in, bringing the shoulder here in a little bit as well and getting it away from that, uh, the plane of that shield there. And then we're gonna do the same thing here in the front for the hammer and carve that out. But first I'm gonna draw this line here to make a stop cut for the left side or the front side of that shield, one for the back as well. And then we're gonna do one for the bottom as well once we rotate this. And it'll just give us something to, to cut into as we cut this section out. Remember too, if this is going too fast for you, pause the video as needed and take your, take your time. Watch through it again if you need to, right? All right, so as you do these, you wanna get this out as smoothly as possible. So don't cut out a huge chunk. Little bitty sections, whittle away at it, right? A little bit at a time, whittle away at it. I'm just taking out small slices and then stop cut, small slice, stop cut. A little bit, I'm not doing huge chunks here, right? Especially on this bottom section where it's such a small sliver. Now you can have the shield go all the way to the ground, in which case if you're doing that, you don't need to do this section that I'm doing here, right? That's your option. With all the carvings you see me do, the goal here is not for you to follow cut by cut on every one of these. It's for you to learn how to get this basic shape and then change it how do you see fit. Maybe you want to do a dwarf with a bigger, thicker mustache. Maybe you want to do one with a different helmet or a different pattern on the shield. That's fantastic. If, you, if this video helps you as a guide to get there to the carvings that you want, that's what I'm looking for. All right, so we're still gonna be removing a lot of wood here, especially along the front. I'm gonna use this detail knife here, which we got a much thinner blade than my Helvy, to get in, this is a Frank Pamey's knife, and it can slice in, like on these sections here, as I'm putting the stop cut in, much easier because it's a thinner blade. And now I can try to take off a little bit more through there, see? Have a larger chunk. And I'm only taking the tip of that blade to the stop cut, not past it, just right to it. If you go past it, it's gonna leave these little scars in the back edge of the shield that aren't gonna look very good. Now you can fix those by washing the carving after you finish carving it, taking it to the sink two or three minutes under some water, and uh, that wood will expand a little bit and heal itself in a lot of ways. So that's always something to do. I wash every single one of my carvings in the sink under the water for two to three minutes, maybe with a little bit of soap and a toothbrush. Just clean it up and that works wonders for it. So we got a good thick shield here from the back, we're rounding that corner off. We're gonna lose a lot of that corner, but I just don't like those hard edges. So we got that section done and now we can start working on this front section here. We've already done the stop cut, but let's go ahead and do it again through here. And we can kind of get up underneath it and then get behind that hammer as well. And just take your time. You're not whittling out big chunks, you're taking out small chunks. Uh, carving a figure like this that's more detailed, it's going to take time. It's going to take a while. Don't get in a hurry, right? Now, right now, I'm just tracing out lines of this hammer, using this detail knife to get in there as deep as I can, and just put those lines in, right? Don't go into where you're going to be leaving the wood. Just trace the outline of this, and then we're going to start removing wood and adjusting this darn finger guard because it keeps coming off. Okay, so 
<clears throat> very gently, you can, just like before, push this blade in right up to the stop cut and then cut it out. And if it doesn't pop out right away, do your stop cut again, do your slice cut again, and see if it comes out then. Right? And there we go. So take it a couple times if you need to. Don't just do it all at once, a um, little bit at a time. You can come here, slice this out a little bit out, like so. And I'm realizing now that we, uh, I didn't cut the front part of that shield off, but that's okay. We're gonna do this cut again here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and work on the other side of this hammer. Stop cuts in that corner, and then I can cut into it like so, and we can cut a chunk out, right? And we're gonna do the same thing along the, the shaft of this hammer in the bottom of the hand here. Stop cuts and cutting up to it, and just removing this large chunk of wood here getting some depth to this hammer. And I want this hammer to be at least, you know, at a quarter inch thick. You can see on the overlay on the left there, you know? And the more we get some wood out here, the more we define that hammer, the more it comes alive. The more your carving has shadow to it, the more it has, has these, this detail that people look at and they're just in awe of, right? And that's what we're going for. We want people to like this thing. So same thing here for the side of the hammer. Get that knife in there and then cut over to it nice and easy. And then you can cut this excess stuff by cutting away if you need to, or just keep coming in however you want to. Whatever is the best. When you, when, you, when you hold the knife in your hand, you look at the carving, whatever feels right for carving, do that. Don't do one that doesn't feel right. That's how people get themselves cut. That's how you get hurt. Be patient with yourself as you're learning this stuff. You know, you're learning new carving techniques all the time. The more time you spend practicing at this, the better you get at it. All right, you can see I'm starting to remove that edge of the shield that we forgot to on this front here, right? We got that quarter inch end right here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut in there nice and thick to take out that edge over here along the front of that hammer, all the way up there. And then we can take the top half of that corner of the shield out as well. Next. So we didn't have to cut behind this part already, but uh, we did, that's okay. We got an extra cut in that we didn't need. And we'll go ahead and keep going because it's we still got plenty of wood to remove. <laughs> plenty of wood. So a little bit of time on this too. I'm just slicing off so I can get it even. And I do a little paring cut coming back towards me. Stop cut there. And here I'm gonna do a stop cut right along there, out in the middle of nothing, you know, just to bring that stuff down to it so I can start removing wood easier. It'd be easier to move that chunk along the hammer by having that stop cut like I did there. And you'll see me switching back and forth between a couple knives here. I'm gonna actually use some, some gouges as well on this guy and just show you different ideas you could have for using these things because not everyone knows where they might all be applicable. And seeing a situation where you could use one, that I might use one instead of a knife, it might blow your mind sometimes. You might be like, wow, that, that's a tool I wanna get. And you spend an extra $20 to get another tool that might uh, just make your hobby a little bit easier, a little bit more fun, right? So let's go ahead and do that right here, right? Because we're trying to get behind the shield here. We, we can use is this big V tool. And this is a number 12 V tool. And we can just take this V and go right here behind the shield and carve that line nice and straight with a V tool rather than using a knife. And that's just another option you have. You don't have to use a knife. And you can use a knife. I'm sorry, it's not number, number 15, not number 12. Number 15, it's a nice deep V tool. Swiss made, it's a file tool. But you can use a knife to do this. You could use a V tool. Either way, whatever you have available. I like using the knife for most things, so I'm gonna keep using the knife. But I wanna want make sure you know that you have options when you're doing this stuff. And some things are easier for some folks. So use what's easier for you, use what you think is best for you, and keep on, keep on whittling. All right, now we're gonna take out that little chunk I talked about earlier, right there to define the bottom edge of that hammer, right? As you're doing this, you don't have to go along just the contours. You can make your own new lines. It's like, man, it'd be easier to take out this blocky section over here. So if I draw a line there and start taking down to it, I can easily cut this chip out past that, right? And that's what I'm doing along the front here. We need to get a lot of wood out of this front so we can easily define a belt in this region and a beard and go underneath the beard. So we're just removing more there. Move more wood here along that arm, the top of that hammer as well like that. And in this section, it could be easier for you not to use a, a knife, but use a gouge instead. So like this is a number seven uh, U gouge from File Tools, and it's a very shallow gouge. But if you come in from the top, you can easily just pull out a lot of wood this way, you see? And if I just go right down to uh, it's a number seven, see? U gouge, nice, small, shallow. I can easily carve right down to this hammer and then just cut those chips out with it. 
and do the same thing right down here to the hammer right down to the shaft and then just cut those chips out right but it makes that that curved plane there and i can fix that later with a hammer but this is this allows you to get in there to an area where that might be harder to get into with your knife to get more wood out right just another option that you have that you can utilize if you want to and uh this is just a uh a curved knife this is an upsweep blade that i got from beckwith forge and i like using those in certain sections where it's harder to get a, a flat blade knife into and i'm just still just removing wood here along the top half of the shaft of the hammer and the arm just smoothing that out that i did with the gouge there to show you guys use that brush to clean things up as needed all right and we got we got some good depth there started right it's a good start all right now looking at the front of this carving you can see we need to take more in here along the front of the face and we still got plenty of room to take that out and still have room for the nose so we're gonna bring that whole face in a little bit give ourselves room so that we can put a nose in there and still have a good thick shield here along the top there before we get too far in there now we did this initially and <clears throat> we had to take that side of the shield off so we're going to go and redefine the front edge of that shield and then i'm going to cut in a stop cut first and the slicing cut next and if it doesn't come out right away just do that cut again stop cut again and then slice and cut again and does it peel away now cut loose the end there it goes it peeled right out so take your time to do that get done right and then add more depth to it do it again take out a little bit more do it again take out a little bit more get some depth up in there under that front of that shield right and that 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 depth in there under that front of that shield there gives that shadow makes it look makes it look like a separate piece that the that the warrior is holding in his hands right and it doesn't look like one piece of wood anymore it looks like a separate thing a separate tool that he's got and that's what really sets a carving apart i love that so we're making great progress so far and you are doing great but let's get back to the bottom half of this hammer because we can definitely take more out from there now like i said you're doing great so far you just gotta keep at it keep whittling at it keep whittling away right just taking out more more wood here along the bottom of the hammer defining the bottom edge of that shield is the goal here and giving more depth to the hammer at the same time because the hammer is kind of leaning against the shield right but right there that bottom edge of that shield there should be an open space beneath it along the top of the hammer and we're just going to define that right like so that's gorgeous that's gonna be perfect and then we'll take out this other side of the hammer right here while we're here stop cuts again are your friend Make a stop cut so you, your blade can stop easily and not cut into where you don't want to cut it to. And it's okay to bounce around a little bit as you do this. Here I'm going to be taking way more along the bottom edge of that shaft and the bottom edge of that hand because there's a little too much wood there, right? You want to keep that depth symmetrical. The same depth along the front of the shaft as along the back of the shaft for the hammer. And uh, yeah, just keep removing wood, small chunks, a little bit at a time as you go here. And just keep bringing that hammer more out like putting putting the area around it in and bring the hammer out by doing so which will make it pop and look very nice just take your time to do that don't rush there's no rush when you're whittling it's just an easy relaxing thing to do an easy way to spend your time a relaxing hobby maybe you're making this for a friend for a family member maybe you're making it to sell to get a little extra money you're doing this as a means to relax on top of all that right that's just superfluous so here i'm just taking out a little bit of underneath that hand and i think we pretty much got this front defined which means we can start working on the back and may start working on the back arm right let's go ahead and put a line here and that's going to be the back of the arm for this guy and then we'll do a little slicing cut right here to pull that out to define that and just smooth that out as you go make some stop cut there along the bottom to smooth it out curve that line in a little bit and put a little depth to it right you don't want this arm to be shallow right arms come out a little bit from the body so think about that and how deep you want to go to really define that arm and then just clean up the cuts around it as you go and that's defined pretty well so we've got that arm defined pretty well we can work on the other side as well 
And again, you can look at that wonderful overlay on the left to see that we've got a lot of meat to take out here behind the back of the shield and under that elbow. So a lot to come in here, right? And that can be daunting to someone who's newer at carving. So we're gonna do this nice and slow and take our time, right? And start with a stop cut along the top and just kind of cut up to it, nice and easy. Now this could create a flat plane in here, right? And then we'll do a back cut right here for this section there to come in and we can start cutting down to it. And this is cutting against the grain so you might be able to chip it out easier that way. Or if you want to just rotate the carving and carve upwards toward it, toward that stop cut. And you don't just use a knife to do this. You could get out one of those gouges that we were using earlier, right? That that uh, number three U gouge or number seven would work here to scoop some of this wood out. And you can push in then from the bottom, which might be a lot easier for you. And then do a stop cut along the top. Or you can use little paring cuts here and cut down. Um, you can define the back edge of that shield though first. With a stop cut along it and stop cuts along the bottom here. So that even if we do get that gouge out, which we probably will here in a moment, we can still just carve along that stop cut we made with the detail knife. And it'll just pop out a little bit easier, I think. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to get one of those gouges here in a moment. And we're just going to carve that out a little bit easier. And this is that uh, number seven file gouge using it the same way I was in the front, just to scoop that stuff out and then use the detail knife to do a stop cut. And you could use the gouge to do the stop cut too if you wanted to, I just like using the detail knife. And just putting some depth here behind the shield and on the longest section of the body, just carving a hole out basically in the corner of the carving here. We round that edge off there, it's gonna come in. We can define more of this later when we come back here to do the robes and do the belt line. But uh, we're just putting some depth to it right now. Some stop cuts here, slicing cuts up to the elbow. Stop cut along the back of the shield and stop cut along the top of the elbow or the bottom of the elbow, I should say. And you just cut those pieces out, pop them out when they come out. And just keep making those stop cuts until they do. A little pairing cut action. Figure out which direction you need to cut from and cut from that direction. If you need to change that, rotate the carving, do so. And take your time. Just remember, don't cut yourself. Be careful, be thoughtful, be mindful, and never carve when you're tired. When people carve when they're tired, that's when they get hurt. Got a little piece of wood stuck in there, just working on getting that out. Working on just like Clipping that section out. A little bit of wood stuck in there. Just trying to get it out. There we go. Alrighty. Use that brush as needed to push that stuff out too. And uh, we got that more defined. We got that uh, push back in there. So that's fantastic. That's a good start for right now. All right. So while we're here looking at the back, we might as well go ahead and start taking off all this uh, sawed marked wood, right? I'm going to use this number three gouge, which is a little bit thinner than the number seven we were using. And I'm going to take off all the saw marks that are left on the carving. Now you want to remove those saw marks because when it comes to standing a carving, which is what we're going to do for this one with Danish, Danish oil, when it comes to standing a carving, uh, uh, a piece of wood that has been touched by a blade, by a cut mark, takes stain and Danish oil differently than one that has been touched by a saw blade, right? A saw blade is a reciprocating motion back and forth usually, you know, it's a rougher cut. And so because of that, that smooth cut from blade will soak stuff up not as smoothly as a rough cut saw mark will. A saw mark will soak it up more quickly, right? It's roughed up more. We want it to be even, right? A, com a consistent coat. So we're going to make sure every surface has been touched with a blade so that we can do that. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm just going around with this nice flat gouge and just trying to take all those saw marks off of the carving every section I possibly can. And I didn't do this sooner. I'm using a knife here to do the same thing. Just, just remove the saw marks. I didn't do this sooner because I wanted to use the lines I had drawn on those saw cuts to get most of this blocked out. So now that we're at this point where I've got most of the stuff blocked in more, so I can start putting detail in. I want to get all the saw marks off now before I put the detail in because it'll be so much more difficult to do it later after this detail starts going in. So now that we got that done, we can start working on the helmet. We can define our beard and uh, get things 
going here for some detail work. So take a look at the overlay that's popping up on the left. This is the carving that we're making right now. And here's the one that uh, I've already made. Decide which nose you like, which style of helmet. They're both a little bit different and uh, go with that, right? So to start with, I'm just taking off a little bit more here along the sides of the helmet. I left a little too much wood there and that's fine. But we can always take more away. So I want to define this a little bit more here, bring that uh, those shoulders in a little bit in the left and right, making sure it's symmetrical. Take it off along the top there as I'm cutting it in as well. And we'll start curving that top in, uh, taking the saw marks off the top of the carving along the top of the head, because it'll be a nice flat domed style helmet. So we don't have to get uh, any roundness to it. It's real easy to take that off the top then with some paring cuts after we define these shoulders here a little bit more. And while we're back here, we're going to bring in the back of the head a little bit. Uh, the helmet's going to be in a little bit from the back shoulder area. So we make sure you define that while we're here. And then uh, that's looking pretty good. Now we can take a little bit here in the front here to bring it in a little bit more. Yeah. All right. Now pairing cut action here along the top. Make sure you keep that left thumb out of the way. I'm using that left thumb to push and uh, bring that knife blade over the top of it. Right, so that thumb is out of the way of the knife already, but you need to be mindful of that. Right, keep that thumb down here and keep that knife blade up there away from it while you're doing this. And that pairing action, when done right, if you get good at this, you can get a lot of wood off rather quickly. But you just got to make sure you're accustomed to keeping that thumb down away from the knife and not bringing it up to meet the knife. And if you do that and you're good at that, you're not going to cut yourself. If you don't feel comfortable with it, don't do it this way, use a push cut instead. But uh, this is the way that I find is best for me, easiest for me, and I haven't gotten cut doing this yet. So use your judgment on what you want to do and how you want to do it. I'm just going to keep cleaning this up till I get all those saw marks off. It's a nice, smooth plane along the top. Along, along the top of carving here, along that end grain, that's where you're going to find out how well you've sharpened your knife. Because if it cuts off smoothly, that's fantastic. You got a good sharp knife. If it doesn't, if you're having a hard time with it, your knife's probably not stropped enough or not sharp enough. So you might want to go back to that, reevaluate, and uh, spend a little time on the leather stropping your knife up. All right, now we're going to jump onto the schnoz here. Now on the uh, left, you can see on the overlay that the, the nose I'm going for right now is going to be a little bit thinner, but the one I did before was a lot thicker. Choose which one you want to do. And by that, I mean how far apart you're going to put the next two cuts, right? I'm going to put the bottom cut here, the first cut here, at the height of our nose. This is how long the nose is on the face. But then after that, we're going to do some stop cuts on the left and right side of the nose. That's where you determine the width of the nose, okay? So make sure you're determining that width based on what you want your dwarf to look like. Do you want a big, thick nose or a thinner nose like the one I'm doing right now? But the first cut, again, is for length. That's what we're doing here. We're doing a stop cut and just carving up to it and this is the length and depth right and when we turn this you can see how deep that nose is going to be and you just go in here underneath there and take out more to get the depth you're like okay that's a good depth for this nose i like that how big do you want that nose to be so i think that's probably pretty good right there so now i'm going to carve the back of the head back a little bit and now we can define the bottom edge of the top of that helmet and we're really coming down maybe an eighth of an inch here along the top. And that's just going to be the rim of that helmet that the eyes are going to sit underneath. And we're going to put a little depth to that because we want to have plenty of shadow there, right? Look at the overlay. You'll see the shadow I'm talking about. And that's how we're defining our eyes is with that shadow. And this is creating the slope of the nose. Again, if you make these two cuts wider apart, it'll make a wider nose. Thinner together, it'll be a, a thinner nose. So... Pay attention to what you might want, right? If you want to make it thinner at the top, wider at the bottom, that's going to be how the nose goes. If you make it angled more outwards toward one side versus the other, that'll be a, a, like a goofy, janky kind of nose, you know? And once I get that done, it's just, just stop cuts here along the top and then along the side. And then we're cutting up into that eye socket like so. And then cutting up along the bottom to smooth that plane out. Once I get this plane smoothed out and not chipped out, we're going to go ahead and make a deep cut right here into that eye socket to create that depth right in there, right? We're gonna do the same thing to the other side here. 
And same thing as the first, we're gonna do a stop cut along the top of the bottom of the helmet, like so. And then we're gonna do one along the edge of that nose. And I'm rotating the carving as needed. We're gonna push that in there pretty good. And then we're just gonna carve to flatten that plane out along the side of the nose, a little bit at a time, chipping away at it. And once we get that in there, now we can stop cut those again, and then we'll go in and get the depth that I, and try to maintain the same curvature of the, the right eye that we got over there as well, right? So here's where we do it. We're, we're still smoothing that out right there. Okay, so here's where we do it. We're gonna get that same depth and that same curvature of the eye. So keep that stop cut there nice and deep. And then we'll bring it in like so, keeping the tip of the blade along with the edge of the nose and try to make that same curvature similar. So we need to go a little bit more. We're going to get a little bit more in here, like so. And that's fantastic. That's coming out just right. So we got some good deep eye sockets in here. And you can do this like that and have that depth right there, like this guy too. Now just rounding off the nose here, right? This is a thinner schnoz than the other guy is. We're just going to round it off on all the corners, spend a little time, add some character to that nose. And take your time, because we're just going to round off all those hard edges along, take those hard corners off the bottom, uh, along the sides here. If you need to undercut it a little bit on the sides, you can. Just come in from whatever direction feels right to get that done. And make it, make it more round. Take a look at the overlay on the left to see what we're going for. Just you tip that blade. Round it off a little bit here, a little bit there. There we go. That's a good looking nose, isn't it? Look at that guy. He's getting some character coming to him. Now we'll work on, on the helmet here. We're going to come down like so. And then come around in a straight line. All the way around the back of the head. And coming back around to the front to meet up where we were before. That's like a pot style helmet, right? Good dwarven helmet. Come down right here, like so. And that's how, we, how, how we're going to cut this. Now, this is going to be a stop cut here, and we're going to have a little lip along that uh, helmet. So a stop cut along the bottom, and then cut up into it. And then a stop cut above that, and then cut down to it for that rim. We'll be able to find our cheeks right in there as well. And our beard will come down right through here and go in back behind that shield. All right, now I stated the bottom of the helmet is going to be a stop cut straight in and then cutting up to it. Nice and simple. This doesn't have to be real deep, just enough to define it. And we'll put like some lines for hair maybe coming out of the, the bottom of the helmet. Like so and if you can't get in here with a regular knife, you can use uh, a V-tool. It's a number 12 V-tool. It's a big thick one we get where you can see that number 12 on there it's a file tool as well and just coming in here i can easily scrape that out if you don't want to use a knife you can do that more easily to find that line by tilting that v tool like so you can keep that flat plane on one side right there in line with the line you want to create which makes it pretty easy so that's, that's absolutely an option i'm going to go back to using this knife that's what i prefer i just want to make sure i show you ways that you could use other tools in certain situations if you would prefer um, even though a lot of the stuff you can't do with a knife you can do most all carvings with a knife you can figure out a way to do it with a knife some people just don't want to think as creatively as others but i love having the option options are great because what do they say variety is the spice of life right okay so we got that done we can work into finding the front of the helmet here the, the upper temple on the left side and the right side just stop cut and then chip it out we'll do the same thing on the other side here stop cut going straight in from the front and then ship it out up the top right straight in from the front not straight in from the side and then uh yeah we'll work on defining that rim of the helmet here along the outer edge and we're coming up maybe an eighth of an inch not much and it doesn't have to be deep here we're just going to find a little rim all the way around back of the carving back to our side meter on the front just like that 
I took a little bit too much off there and cut it off. That's okay. I can fix it right here, right now. Just cut up to it and redo that section. And I cut along the top of that. It's already fixed. Like it wasn't even there. And you, you're going to make mistakes like that too, where you cut off more than you meant to. Just fix them. Carvers give up because they make a mistake and they say, oh, this carving is ruined. I'm done with it. And they pitch it in the fire, right? Or they pitch it in a, in a trash bin. Don't give up. Fix your carving. Can you change it into something else? Can you make that deformed hand into maybe a hook? Maybe this guy's a pirate, right? Change it rather than give up on it. Keep working through it. And that, what you're working on there is that creative process in your mind. Your ability to create something from nothing. You're developing that along with how to carve this and how to carve that, right? So it's not just about how to hold the knife. It's about how do I work that creative portion of my mind that's going to help me determine what I can create and how I can create it. So don't give up on your carvings. Keep pushing through. Okay, now the helmet is pretty defined. We can work on the uh, the cheekbones here. I'm going to use a little flex cut detail knife here. Flex cut make a fantastic knife. It's a great knife. And I have been using this detail knife from FlexCut since I got it. It was one of the first knives I got. And I still love the way this blade is shaped. I hate the handle. And you'll notice that like, I, I have uh, taken the logo off of it. I have actually uh, sanded down the whole thing because I hated the glossy finish of it. And I hate the shape of the handle. But that blade, this detail blade, I mean, the pointy tip, the, the sharpness of it, the flat plane, I can't knock them for that. It's a, it's a solid knife. So if you're a new wood carver and you're thinking about getting a new knife, take a look at those flex cut ones because they are they're quite solid. They're, they're good, reliable knives. And that detail knife is one of my favorites, even though I have a lot of other more expensive knives. So something to keep in mind. All right, so we're just working on the, those cheeks, right? I, all it is is like little V cuts straight across. You can curve them if you want to. You can make them a little bit more defined however you want to. And then we're outlining that beard and then stop cutting to the beard as well. Coming straight in for the beard and then stop cutting towards the side of it, right? So straight in here, right down, and then I'm going to stop cutting the bottom, stop cutting the top and cut that chip out. And define that beard here along the shoulder, and along the other side of that hat. And then we'll round it off from the front to... Uh, Bring that beard in a little bit, like so. And that defines that beard pretty well. You can see it goes right under that shield, which is just what we want. So stop cuts along the bottom here, up onto the beard. This is why we gained all this depth here before. So we could do this and put this beard in and put a belt in later afterwards. I'm using this paring cut to come up there along that stop cut. And just like so, we got a beard developed and round that edge off as you need to. And it doesn't have to be coming out all real far, but you can have this beard come out as far as you want. You can bring that, that body in more and more and just have a really thick, bushy beard or have a thinner beard like this. However big you want that beard. You want it to be wider. Whatever you want. Sky's the limit. It's your carving. Do what you will like. Here I'm bouncing around a little bit and I'm just working on the hand, right? I'm going to stop cut up to the hand, not down to the hand, because the hand goes under the clothing, right? So we stop cut up to it to provide that effect and then rounding off the base of it. I'm not going to put uh, fingers on this because it's going to be like a gauntlet. So it's going to be covered right? like a big male mitten, like a chain mail mitten. And I'm bringing the shaft of that hammer in, curving that hammer now. We're starting to provide more detail now that we've got that face in. Just curving that hammer in. Cleaning up the edges of that inside of that shaft on both sides as well. And if we need to put more detail in or more depth in along the hammer, we can. We can uh, just keep bouncing around, curve out that hammer on the top edge. A little bit there, a little bit here. Get rid of those hard lines that we left behind before because we can now. Clean that up right there a little bit too. Take a moment to evaluate your carving. Smooth things out here like along the back or whatever section you feel like might need to be cleaned up a little bit first. And then, uh, then we'll go ahead and grab our pencil 
and we're going to start defining how we're going to do these pauldrons here. So take a look at the overlay on the left and you'll see that we're going to put in nice thick pauldrons. It's going to be two layered. We're going to top one here, just form that in straight down along the back edge of the helmet. Same thing for the other side, coming along that edge all the way around the front. It'll be right about the height of the shield there. I'll put a little rim on it after we get done as part of detail work later. But this will be a stop cut and then up to it. And it's not going to be very deep. Just like that rim on the helmet. Not very deep at all. Just a little stop cut. Cut right to it. I'm even using this rough out blade for this section. because It's not going very deep at all. A good flat straight blade it is fantastic for it. I'm taking that chip off the corner there just to redo it. Just to make it a little bit further in like the... Like the clothing of the shoulder goes up in under that pauldron and to find the back edge the same thing on the other side too carving that back edge out and then a nice little chip out underneath the edge there on the front or the back section i should say and just uh put a little depth to it you know meeting up underneath the back of that shield there those big pauldrons really start to show this guy's a warrior, right? So we'll have a second set layer, because those things are always layered when they when you see them on old medieval documentaries or in museums, right? So the second layer come out underneath it, a little bit further down the shoulder. And this is the same as the first little stop cut in the back, stop cut along the bottom, and just a small chip, just enough to define it slightly. We don't want too much depth here. It's supposed to be a thin piece of metal laying across the skin, right? It's not like providing the depth on the shaft of a hammer or a shield. Just a thin piece of metal laying across the skin so we don't have to go too deep to define what its purpose is and what we're looking at. And that's working out pretty well. So we'll do the other side, same way. Second verse, same as the first. Just... Finding that ever so gently. All right. And then along the back of the head there, we can just uh, put a line here for like a hairline or like a, uh, like a chainmail coif, right? Uh, for a lot of those helmets, they'd have a chainmail coif hanging down from the back of the helmet here. So it's just flexible chainmail armor that would hang down along the back and the sides of the helm to you know, protect those delicate areas. So this is a little stop cut here along the bottom because that's the biggest portion we need to find because the side along the side of the head, the spots there, those are already defined. So we're defining the spot along the back here. Smooth the back out a little bit as well. And then we'll put a little texture to it maybe with a little, little U gouge. But if we got like a number seven, number nine, three millimeter, five millimeter, we could put some lines on there. As you can probably already see on the overlay, how that looks. I think it's going to turn out pretty well. So, uh, there we go. That's a, what was that, number eight? Yeah, number eight. There we go. So just some vertical lines here to provide some depth. And if you want to do chain, you could do it, uh, do it left to right lines. Just kind of randomize the pattern however you want to, right? So I'm just going with these straight lines for this one. Like so all the way around. And we'll use a detail knife to Knock all those chips out here once we get done. Just putting those lines in. And you don't have to do this. This is just something else that you could do to help add a little texture to your carving, right? Add a little more detail. And just going to take that detail knife, like I said, and cut out all those chips along the top edge. Add that stop cut along the top. That will pop loose. Just like so. I'm probably going to some chainmail texture in the arms too. Maybe we'll go left to right when we do that section. Just to add more detail, right? More, more texture to the carving. All right. So I want to work on that belt. But to do that, we're going to need to clean up this section here behind the shield. So we're going to smooth this out here. Now that we know more about how this guy looks and how wide his stance is going to be, we can clean up this area here and define it a little bit more. Smooth it out while we figure out where our belt's going to go on him. Clean those edges up. 
and you can bounce around and clean up as needed as well just figure out what you might want to take care of where you want to bring a little more wood off all right so again we're popping up that overlay to show you what the belt is going to look like when complete on this particular carving and uh we're gonna put it not too thick maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch all the way around the front too right and if you'll note like we bring the back down to like curve the back into the belt right and if you do that it provides a more muscular stance <clears throat> to our dwarf you don't want him looking too straight back because that doesn't look like there's any any life to him right so you want to curve that back into the belt so that uh we provide that anatomy to him you know like that sense of there's a there's a, there's a skeletal frame underneath there there's someone with with a muscular muscularness to them that is clearly defined in his suit of armor right so it's his stop cuts along the top of the belt and then slicing cuts down to the stop cut mark don't go past your stop cut mark because that just leaves you know scarred wood not to worry about fixing later so just stop cut and then cut down to stop cut along the bottom and cut up to and then smooth it out right because it doesn't have a big deep pinch toward the belt it is a shallow one so we're bringing like that back in you know like i was talking about and the same for the front right if you bring the front in from the chest to the belt it makes it look like the chest is protruding more because it gives a little musculature musculature to the carving right so this is what we're doing we're bringing that down into the belt like so and same thing down here bring it up into the belt smooth that out not have as sharp of an angle there will benefit us than having a sharp angle and so once we get done too, I'll show you how we can use a U-gouge to provide a little tightness to the belt, right? Make it look like it's pulling cloth in. We can do that pretty easily by adding a couple lines and you'll see that in a moment. So just smoothing out, just taking a little extra wood off the bottom. That way it's not as sheer of an angle going in and uh, where the back protrudes more. Look at that, see? That's what I was talking about with that muscularness of the back, right? Now we can curve this belt out, taking stuff kind of 45 degree angle, the top and bottom of it, which will shrink the belt down a little bit because it's protruding out too far right now. And we, we need to take a little bit of that belt out. And that's okay. And we took a lot out along the top and bottom and smoothed it out to where it looked a lot better. Gave him gave some shape. And there we go. Look at that. That's fantastic. That gives him that look we're looking for. And we can use, like I said, that U-gouge. Where's that small one? We want uh, big number nine first. We'll do one that's nice and deep, big, and stop cut on the top and bottom of that to knock those little chips out, okay? Looks like the material's kind of pulling in there, right? And I'll do some smaller ones with a three millimeter and just put some lines in the same spot on the top of the belt. Do it in the bottom and then do it in the top have the meat up there and then when you chip those out it's like the material is being cinched in by the belt it provides that nice little effect there i like the way that looks so we'll do a couple more on this side too right, like so and there we go so that's the back of the belt now we can work in the front and just like the back we want to bring bring it down to the belt right so we want the chest to be out a little bit more than the belt and belly are because we want this guy to look more muscular, right? He's a warrior. He shouldn't be looking fat. If you want to look fat, we could have the belt come out farther than the chest, have him, give, it, give him a big old belly. But rather than do that, we're going to have it come under the beard, down in towards the belt, which will make him look more muscular, more like uh, he's born to fight, right? Ooh, this section here is kind of hard to get into. I switch over to this detail knife, but even then it's still hard to get to. So what, what could you use? You could use one of these guys here. Let's call a skew. And I've got two skews here I use, a flat one and an angled one. And they're both shown as number ones on their uh, the tool mark, right? Because they're flat blades. But there's one's just angled, and it's a skew, an angled skew and a flat skew. So this angled skew is a little bit too wide to get in there. But this flat one, I can get in there just right to get that cut I need to. So this is another situation where like having extra tools can come in real handy because I didn't see an immediate path to getting that piece of wood out with the knife I had. So 
just put your different tool and you can do that just fine all right now we can worry about curving that uh belt in just want to find that arm a little more right there as you notice things good and fix them when you see them right like you notice oh that arm just doesn't look as defined as it could be i could add more of a cut there and get more shadow going just go ahead and do that and rotate carving around if you need to and we'll come back to this thing and uh curve our belt out like we were getting ready to do all right what do you say we work on that shield now so looking at the overlay on the left you can see where i'm gonna go for i'm gonna go for an x pattern but you can go for this kind of like angled pattern if you want to like we did in the original shield however you want to do this whatever pattern you want to put in just do that i want to put a big kind of x mark so i'm going to put a little outline here on the edge maybe about a quarter of an inch in square and then i'll use a v tool to mark those lines where is that 15. So number 15 v tool and i'm just going to come in nice and easy not going in too deep just to define that outer edge to give me something to work off of and you can do this with a stop cut if you want to just a little bit quicker to do it with a v tool because i'm not need to get a lot of depth and just need to draw a line right so there we go now i'm going to draw this x in here and have those corners to go off of and i'm going to speed that up because drawing can be boring you can obviously look at the overlay on the left to see exactly how we're drawing this out and what we're going for and uh yeah let me just go ahead and trace those lines out i'm putting that uh inside edge there right into the corner on each one to make it symmetrical and then i'm just going to cut out to that line like so nice and smooth just to define that x we're not removing a lot i'm just removing a little bit along these lines that i've already got cut and then we're going to add some texture on the negative spaces of the x right on this area that i'm carving out right now we'll add texture to that and make that x pop out a little bit anytime you see a jump cut like that in the middle of a video it's because i had to stop for a moment because i'm a father of three and uh kids need help sometimes so just doing the same thing i did on the other side moving out those edges right there along what i cut stop cut and then just slice cut over to it and define that x as best you can same thing along the top section for the negative space there slicing cuts to define and then cut out those edges like so if you want to go a little bit deeper with this you can go a little bit deeper and you don't have to do an x you could do like that first pattern show where you do diagonal lines with the V tool that doesn't take too long nice and easy to do or you could do concentric circles or you could look up uh, Google Google patterns on uh, Google images and look up a fun pattern that you might be able to think oh I could trace that with a knife or I could do that and you can put any image on here you want to maybe maybe draw a, a skull or crossbones or you know some dwarven war hammer maybe with some intricate runes on it if you wanted to doesn't have to be an X. I just felt like I wanted to do an X. So I did an X, right? It's your carving. Make it what you want. All right. I think that looks pretty good. And now we'll take this number 11 gouge and just do some vertical lines in this negative space here just to provide some texture, right? Set it off from the flat plane of the X. And just uh, like so, start to come alive, right? It makes it look like a wood texture with that X maybe being metal or uh, a banded board along the top outer edge of it right to strengthen the shield maybe who knows it's a fantasy character in a fantasy world and it's gonna look great in a bookshelf when it's done <laughs> all right and we're just finishing up that texturing right there in the negative space in the x and we're pretty much on the on the home stretch for this guy we're we're getting close to being done we'll do a little bit of the beard Maybe do it, add some more details to the pauldrons or the hammer and uh, that chainmail on the arms, maybe. And that'd probably be it. So let's go ahead and do this beard here. Let's put uh, in a little V here, an upside down V underneath the nose, and that's going to be our mouth. And we'll just stop cut there, nice and deep, and a stop cut there. And then we'll carve into it. Now be careful because that shield is right here, too, so you have to get that angle just right to get a blade in there. Maybe use a skew if you've got one, and you can get straight in there with a push cut to get that section out the way that you want it and help define a little bit of a mouth there. 
It didn't do an, if you didn't want to do an upside down V, you could do a different shape to like give a little bit different expression to him. I like a somber expression on this little dwarf, right? Now I'm going to use this uh, deeper number 11. It's a three millimeter number 11 and just provide some lines for the mustache, for the beard, right? Going up into the nose and as you get on the cheeks, go up to the cheeks. Little hairlines and we'll texture it randomly a little bit, you know, some straight lines, shorter lines, longer lines here. Just to provide some depth, the beard, it looks really great when it's done. Get all along, kind of rough up the whole surface of the beard, every bit that you can to make sure that uh, we set it apart from the, the surrounding material. That's going to look fantastic. This guy's really turning out great, I think. I might not sell him. I might keep him for myself. I might keep both of them, maybe. <laughs> That's the fight with every carving that I do, is I want to keep them all. I don't want to give them away. All right, so let's look at this guy. What details can we add? We can add something here to uh, the arms. We talked about doing chain mail, right? So we're going to do some lines here. I'm using that number 11 gouge again. I was doing very short lines randomly texturing this arm number 11 see just randomly texturing this arm to make it look like chainmail and it's going left to right for this and just roughing up that surface short little push ins push out in and out to provide a texture and it gives the illusion of chainmail on that arm i think that's fantastic and we got all those little fuzzies that are sticking there on it we're just going to knock those off the brush once we're done and uh that's gonna look great that's gonna look real great so just a little bit more detail you know a little more something to set them off look at that that's working out well let's do the other arm too same thing just texturing it a little randomly moving around short little ins and outs and uh don't make them symmetrical make them random Shorter one here, longer one there. Stagger them a little bit against one another. And it gives us the illusion of chain mail. Maybe we'll add some details to these pauldrons too, right? A little ridge on the, the top and bottom. We can also take a U-gouge and rough up the surface of this, these robes underneath the uh, pauldron. And just make it more cloth-like. So let's do that next, actually. Let's get that uh, number eight. And just add some texture here along the bottom. Add some folds of the robe. And now we'll get this number five here. And we'll just add some texture to the robe. Just put some curves to it here and there, you know. Rough it up. And that will give it a cloth-like appearance. Put some life to it. Right? And this is what these V-tools and these you guys are good for is the extra little things past the knife work right you can make a nice carving with a knife but you can make a fantastic a stellar carving with some other tools that will give you more options so having those options is wonderful and i highly suggest that maybe you invest in more tools if you want get them explore with them see what all you can create it's such a fun hobby don't limit yourself to what you can do with it. All right, just just trying to add a lot of texture wherever I can. Now, for this next part here, I think we're going to work on the pauldrons like I talked about before. So I'm going to pop up an overlay. And it's Future Johnny that has to pop up overlays, right? Current Johnny doesn't have to do that. So Future Johnny's got to pop that overlay up. And uh, we're going to put little marks here along the top of the pauldrons. You can see them on the left. Just to add a little detail that right we'll set them apart so little lines we already got a line like that on the helmet so why not right a little more details we add can really set a carving apart maybe we'll do something in the hammer too like put a little little outline on it maybe fun as well because we're about to be done with this guy and then i will direct you to another video i did on uh, finishing with dash oil because I don't want to keep doing the same ending for every video that I do one of these guys with, where I show people how to put dash oil on. I can just refer to one video 
That way people can see exactly what that process is. And I can always refer back to it and say, hey, go check this out. And you'll see how I finished this guy. And then we don't have an extra 20 minutes on the end of every one of these videos showing how to do that. Okay. She's looking pretty good. And like I said, let's, let's do a little something to the hammer here, right? We did some texture on the first hammer. So let's, uh, let's just do an outline with a V tool just along the outer edge. It's kind of like, like Thor's mule near, right? And you got a little line on there. We'll do a line here along the top edge, along the left side, right side, and bottom. And maybe on the, on the side of the hammer as well. Nice little line to define it. Let's give something else to draw the eye. Another little thing. We go, wow, he carved this, he carved that. Right? This is easier for us than it is for someone else looking at this. So let's just add more detail to really amaze folks when they're looking at it. I'm going to clean up this corner here because that didn't go down as far as I wanted it to. And that should be uh, about it. That thing's looking fantastic, isn't it? Look at this guy. Clean with the brush, and I think that we're about done. Okay, so now next I would take about two to three minutes of washing him right under the sink. And that really, really sets him apart. Look at him now. He looks kind of buttery, smooth. It heals all those extra cuts in there and those lines and really makes the carving look fantastic. So I highly suggest you wash your carvings. Wash your carvings. Put them under the sink for two to three minutes. Scrub them with a brush. I use just a regular toothbrush and it will really just make them look beautiful. And then let it dry completely before you start doing the finish on this guy. Right? I'm going to put Danish oil on him and some Watco uh, natural paste finishing wax. So before you do that section, make sure you let this dry first right maybe an hour of drying time before you start all right i'm gonna have a link to the previous video i did on uh finish on how to use danish oil and wax so make sure you check that out to see how we finish these guys here so you get this exact look if you want this exact look or you can paint him do whatever you want to he's your carving listen folks thank you so much for watching i really appreciate you guys coming by please like the video that really does help get the video out to more people subscribe to the channel and uh, stop by next time as well. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Have a great day. Enjoy yourself. And thanks for watching. Have a good day, folks. Bye.